And I call on the Cabinet Secretary, Angela Constance. Thank you. Thank you. Presiding officer, there is absolutely no excuse for hate crime and prejudice. And this Scottish Government is committed to tackling it wherever it happens, uh, whenever it happens and whoever it happens to. An attack on one is an attack against us all and recent events have emphasised the importance of unity in the face of those who would seek to divide us. The terrorist atrocities in Manchester and London serve to remind us not just of the terrible dangers of hatred and intolerance, but also of the hugely inspiring way in which whole communities can rally round to demonstrate unity, support each other and stand up to hatred. At the parliamentary debate on hate crime last November, I said that I would uh, bring forward a full response to the recommendations of Duncan Morrow's advisory group on hate crime, prejudice and community cohesion. And I'm pleased to update Parliament that we have today published a plan of action to implement the advisory group's recommendations. And I would like to take this opportunity again to express my thanks to Dr Morrow and the group for their good work in this area. The advisory group's work has built upon a, a long-standing commitment to these issues in Scotland. This parliament has a long history of championing equality and standing united against hatred. And the Scottish Government is actively working to build one Scotland where diversity is celebrated and everyone has the opportunity to flourish. We know that inclusive and cohesive communities that embrace diversity provide a better quality of life for everyone. Communities thrive when they feel a shared sense of belonging, when they learn and grow together and when they feel able to live their lives in peace. But cohesion is weakened when the things that push us apart come to the fore. Isolation and loneliness, poverty and inequality and intolerance and prejudice. And these are the, the issues that need to be tackled if we are to remain united. So we've worked tirelessly to promote equality and tackle discrimination. And I think that Scotland is in a relatively good place. We know social attitudes have changed for the better and equality is very much at the forefront of how we do our business. But it's absolutely vital that we are not complacent and last week's hate crime statistics show that we still have work to do. A minority of the population still think it's acceptable to be prejudiced. And we know that people continue to express hate crime and uh, discrimination, that that experience uh, is all too real for too many. And unity is hindered uh, by the toxic language. We sometimes hear and read about immigration, Islam, refugees, which can only serve to divide communities condone prejudice and encourage hatred and abuse. And some have used recent events to target the Muslim community, which is completely unacceptable, and this cannot be allowed to stand and should always be challenged. So Scotland, presiding officer, is in a strong position, but as Doc Duncan Morrow's group has rightly recognised, there remains much more to be done. In reading the, the group's report, I was struck by the experiences of those who suffer intolerance and discrimination, which can sometimes be lost in the wider debates about policy and legislation. And it is vital that we have that lived experience at the very heart of our approach as we seek to tackle these issues. So we'll look afresh at the way we do this to ensure that we are hearing the range of voices and views within communities and that these communities are actively participating in shaping our approach. The advisory group's recommendations are wide ranging, so require breadth and depth in terms of approach to implementation. Important as it is, this is not solely the responsibility of the justice system to deal with. It requires a, a truly cross-government endeavour with communities, education, transport and justice portfolios eh, working together to tackle these issues. And that's why I'm announcing today that we are establishing a multi-agency delivery group eh, with ministerial oversight to ensure that the advisory group's recommendations are progressed. In particular, this will look carefully at barriers to reporting hate crime and how to remove those barriers. It will also consider how we better support work to build community cohesion within local communities and community planning partnerships. And we will invite COSLA eh, to join the group as a key partner. We are 
also setting up a, an advisory panel on community cohesion to ensure our work uh, is always informed uh, by the very best of expert advice. And we need to make sure that our approach is informed uh, by the best evidence uh, and that's why we're working closely with Police Scotland uh, to produce more detailed statistics on hate crime. We are also updating our national outcome on strong, resilient and supportive communities and will seek to improve uh, the way that we measure this. And we'll also continue to, to work very closely with our justice agencies who provide frontline support to victims, tackle perpetrators and engage with communities to raise awareness and provide reassurance. This will include looking at what more we can do to tackle online abuse. There is, of course, no magic bullet to solving this problem, but social media companies most certainly have a role in removing unacceptable content and ensuring their users have a safe experience. But we also have to ensure that we tackle the underlying behaviours and attitudes uh, that drive people uh, to act uh, in this way in the first place. Ensuring that police and prosecutors have the right tools to tackle hate crime is vital. That's why the Scottish Government has commissioned Lord Brackadale to conduct uh, an independent review of hate crime legislation. And this builds on the recommendation in Duncan Morrow's report that we consider whether the existing criminal law provides sufficient protections for those who may be at risk of hate crime, including in relation to their gender, age or their refugee or asylum status. Lord Brackadale will make recommendations to ministers in early 2018 and will consider these recommendations very carefully. And I know that Lord Brackadale plans to engage widely in the development of his uh, recommendations and I uh, look forward to meeting him myself uh, later this month and I'm sure that other members across the chamber will seek to engage uh, with the review as it goes forward. Looking beyond the, the justice system, making sure that our broader services are responsive to hate crime is also important. So we'll agree a hate crime charter with public transport operators which provides common standards and consistent processes uh, for dealing with hate crime on public transport. And we'll develop our understanding of hate crime in the workplace uh, and work with STUC and others to take steps uh, to address it. Important as having strong services and quick responses to hate crime is, uh, we know it's not enough on its own. Awareness of hate crime needs to increase. In November last year, I announced that in 2017, we would run a public awareness campaign on hate crime. And this will aim to raise awareness, help people to understand the impact of their actions and increase wider societal understanding. And it will build on previous campaigns like the Stand Up to Hate Crime campaign uh, that we ran in 2014. And we plan to run it in conjunction uh, with Hate Crime uh, Awareness Week uh, later this year. All these steps, presiding officer, are important ones, but we also need to tackle the prejudicial attitudes that cause hate crime. This is the fundamental route from preventing it from happening in the first place. Later this month, I'll be announcing funding through the equality budget to promote equality and cohesion eh, across Scotland. And we'll continue to support interfaith dialogue and are also formally adopting the International Holocaust Memorial Trust's eh, working definition of anti-Semitism. And we'll ensure that the advisory group's recommendations eh, are locked into our work to promote race equality and the rights of disabled people. And then there are the, the simple things that we can all do as members of our own communities. This weekend sees the, the great get together inspired by Joe Cox, which will see communities and neighbourhoods come together uh, to celebrate what binds them. And I'll be attending Edinburgh Pride to stand shoulder to shoulder with the LGBTI community in Scotland. And I'm sure members right across the chamber will have similar plans. And I would very much encourage uh, everyone to, to get involved in some shape or form. The Great Get Together is a, a fantastic initiative, uh, so let us put our differences aside and celebrate all that we have in common. Presiding Officer, our response to the advisory group outlines what I consider to be an ambitious yet practical range of steps that will continue our work to build one Scotland with many cultures where everyone has the opportunity to flourish uh, and everyone can live in peace. And I know that the Chamber is united around the fact that hate crime and prejudice are unacceptable. So let us also unite around the continued need to show leadership, to remain vigilant and drive real change in the months and years ahead, eh, looking at the 
practical action that makes a real difference to people's lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would urge those who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak button if you have not already done so. And I call on Adam Tompkins. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I very much welcome this statement and the action that the government is taking on hate crime, prejudice and community cohesion. Ministers have our full support and I associate myself and the Scottish Conservatives with the Cabinet Secretary's comments about Manchester, London and the remarkable resilience of communities across the United Kingdom. Presiding Officer, in 2015, the Scottish Council of Jewish Communities published a report, What's Changed About Being Jewish in Scotland? Two quick quotations from that report. For the first time in 62 years, I did not attend high holiday services this year due to my security concerns. I'm scared to tell people at work that I'm Jewish. I talk about going to church instead. Figures released last week showed that since this 2015 report, both offensive conduct towards Jews and offensive communication about Jews is increasing in Scotland. So what specifically is the Scottish Government doing to address the ongoing rise of anti-Semitism in Scotland? <coughs> Secondly, the Cabinet Secretary mentions the multi-agency delivery group, but she doesn't offer very much detail. So can I ask her when it will be established, who will chair it, how many members it will have, and what its remit will be? What specifics about these matters can the Cabinet Secretary uh, share with us today? And finally, the Cabinet Secretary talks uh, of a renewed public awareness campaign building on the Stand Up to Hate Crime campaign in 2014. Was that campaign successful? Uh, and if so, how was that evaluated? What assessment of that campaign has the Scottish Government undertaken to ensure that this time public resources are targeted as effectively as possible? This is too important an issue for us to get wrong. Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and uh, I appreciate Mr Tompkins' verbalisation of the support of the action that were taken uh, in response to uh, the range of recommendations uh, made by Duncan Morrow and uh, his group. Um, in terms of the report uh, prepared in 2015 by Skojek, I have indeed received um, a copy of that report and I am very familiar uh, with its uh, content, as I am with the, the, the Scottish uh, Council on uh, Judaism in Scotland. They're an organisation I've met uh, on more than a few occasions, actually across various uh, por portfolios. In terms of uh, the, the hate crime charges uh, against uh, Jews or Judaism, uh, it is indeed up by 28%. Um, that is an increase from 18 to 23 charges and uh, while those uh, figures remain very low figures, uh, nonetheless uh, I would accept that we must, mustn't be complacent, that there may well be issues of under-reporting. Uh, we will see that issue raised time and time again uh, in terms of other forms of hate crime, in terms of disability uh, being the, the other example. I think the interfaith work is particularly important uh, in this regard, uh, as is the work done through um, our equality budget. In terms of the uh, multi-agency uh, delivery group, it will have ministerial oversight. Uh, I will chair that. Uh, that will not exclude the involvement of other ministers. This indeed it has to be uh, a cross-government uh, endeavour. Uh, other membership, uh, other invitees uh, to participate will indeed be COSLA, the police, uh, Crown Office, although independent, uh, have an important uh, role uh, in this. Uh, and there will be other uh, groups uh, and organisations that we will want to uh, include within that. Uh, I want this group to be uh, up and running uh, this year. Um, and the focus is on delivery, it's on the practicalities, how you have an impact uh, on the front line and uh, in the ground. And I suppose what has informed my thinking is in this regard is the way in which uh, the equally safe uh, joint board on delivery operates and the progress that we've managed to make on the ground uh, in terms of services for violence against women um, and girls. In terms of hate crime campaigns, they do indeed uh, need to be evaluated. And I suppose our previous experience of the One Scotland campaign and indeed uh, the Stand Up to Hate Crime campaign in 2014, along with Dr Morrow's uh, report, has led us to the view that as well as increasing awareness, that we need to be increasing awareness of the impact um, of hate crime and that there is also a role um, in, with offenders um, increasing their insight into the impact uh, of their behaviour because even with low, uh, low instances um, of more antisocial type 
uh, behaviour, the impact that that has on individuals day out and day out is very grinding and increases social inclusion, which we know uh, increases the risk of, of hatred. Pauline McNeill. Thank you. We welcome the statement and the priority given to tackling hate crime and prejudice, and in particular, the reference to education service tackling prejudice, transphobia, crime, homophobia, disability, and a particular reference to refugees and asylum seekers. It is a difficult time for many communities across the country. I was struck by the quote from Duncan Morrow, who said that the alienation of minority groups can lead to radicalisation. Uh, I'd like to ask the Minister uh, what the government are doing to respond to that point and if they're going to be feeding in any, anything at all to the much discredited prevent strategy. It would be wrong for us to be complacent. The statement says we know social attitudes have changed for the better. I would like an absolute assurance from the Cabinet Secretary that they will not found on this assumption in today's world. I and many other members in this chamber stood with the Muslim community on Sunday united against terrorism. That is a community which are certainly not complacent and they're certainly very vigilant. Religious aggravation has increased and we need to understand that in some detail. The nature of that kind of crime, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia and any other person who is offended against on the grounds of faith. It, will the minister be able to say when there'll be more detailed figures available so that we can all have a more detailed analysis of the, of the issue here? Thank you. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, again, President Officer, I'm grateful to the tone and tenor of uh, the member's uh, question. She's right to highlight the importance uh, of education uh, in this matter. Um, she will be aware that um, uh, counter-terrorism um, is reserved, um, but many aspects of uh, the prevent strategy um, are um, devolved. And I suppose what I would say to, to the member is that while there is a, a, a justice service, a police, a security service, a, a counter-terrorism response to extremism, what my statement about today is about how we help communities uh, respond to extremism, how we help bring people together, how we help to break down barriers and enable people to work, live uh, and grow together. Uh, and, and in many ways, that was the essence uh, of Duncan uh, Morrow's work. And the, we have to be committed to this work uh, with our communities uh, at times of uh, stability, of times of calm, but also at times of adversity. And I suppose what I'm trying to say, we need to be committed to this work uh, in the long term. We need to be committed to uh, you know, our, our efforts to address poverty and inequality, uh, eradicate prejudice and discrimination, and social uh, isolation. In terms of um, her, her other comments, it is absolutely uh, imperative that we make sure that no community is scapegoated uh, for the, the actions of uh, a mindless uh, minority. And while we haven't seen an increase in community tension uh, following uh, the tragic events in London and Manchester, we do need to be uh, vital, uh, absolutely focused um, on that. Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement today. Last week, a gentleman who is an EU citizen came into my regional office in Dumfries because he had been on the receiving end of extreme verbal abuse while at work, and he was quite affected by this. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that further action, as outlined, will reassure EU citizens living in the south of Scotland and assure them that tackling hate crime is an extremely important priority for this Scottish Government? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, um, the member uh, raises an important issue because behind the statistics uh, there is that personal testimony and experience of uh, individuals and the member touches on something that actually I didn't address uh, in Polly McNeill's re remark about how we always need to get behind the, the, the headline uh, statistics. So in terms of, for example, uh, religiously uh, aggravated offences, they have indeed increased, although there is a, a decrease in hate crime charges against the Muslim community, but then again, uh, we need to be hyper-vigilant to the issues of under-reporting 
and that emphasises uh, the need to engage uh, with our communities and the organisations uh, that represent our communities and there can be absolutely no uh, scapegoating. Um, as I said in, my, uh, in an earlier response, while we have seen no spike in hate crime following the, the EU referendum, unlike south of the border, uh, we, we mustn't uh, be uh, complacent. Uh, I'm sure the member, uh, Emma Harper, is interested that given uh, that her constituent experiences verbal abuse uh, while at work, that you know, one of the actions we are taking forward is to work with employers uh, and the STUC, uh, taking um, our work to uh, improve equality and improve community cohesion, taking that into to new spheres uh, such as um, the, the, the workplace. But it is important uh, that members continue to raise the individual experience uh, of constituents uh, because that gives uh, this government and other members the opportunity to reiterate that EU nationals remain welcome uh, in this country and that any abuse uh, is unacceptable and uh, at all times it must be reported. Thank you. We have a number of questions. Hopefully we can make progress through them all. Margaret Mitchell to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too welcome the Cabinet Secretary's statement. The advisory group report highlights concerns about data collection and the fact that disaggregation appears to be inconsistent. In particular, Police Scotland's data is mixed in terms of usefulness and has not been available at a local level since the creation of a single force. Um, the report also states that continued delays um, are being experienced in establishing the vulnerable persons database, um, which is an obvious barrier to producing good police data. Can she therefore confirm what the Scottish Government is doing about the wider issue of data collection and when the vulnerable persons database, database will be established? And Given she's highlighted that social media companies most certainly have a role in removing unacceptable content and ensuring their users have safe experience, can she elaborate in particular on any discussions the, the government or herself have had with social media companies and where issues may be reserved, the discussions she's had at UK government level in addressing this issue? Yeah, but officer, I hope to reassure the member in that uh, Justice Analytical Services uh, are working on a broader range of information, information uh, with respect to victims and the offenders and the uh, circumstances uh, in, in which uh, offending uh, has occurred and that uh, will, through um, you know, a variety of means, including the multidisciplinary group, uh, inform policy and our actions as we uh, go, go forward. In terms of the issues in and around the vulnerable persons uh, database and the issues around local data. Uh, I will ask the Justice Secretary to uh, respond directly uh, to her on that, but she is right to point out that there is a, a variety of data that we need uh, to look at. Uh, we shouldn't forget the Scottish Social Attitude Survey uh, in terms of what that tells us about the progress we're making and uh, where we have still work to do, but also some of the survey work done by the, the Scottish Refugee uh, Council as well. In terms of uh, online uh, abuse, uh, the Lord Brackadale uh, work will touch upon uh, the, the issues in and around uh, online uh, abuse. Uh, we do indeed all have a responsibility to uh, raise awareness of the risks online and to promote safety online. It's an area that we'll continue to work uh, with the UK government and others on. And of course, there are very specific prevent duties uh, on uh, Scottish specified authorities around their IT solutions uh, and uh, filters. Uh, but there is no doubt there is more to do. Uh, and the Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Microsoft have, uh, I understand, made a commitment to work together to remove uh, offensive material. Uh, but it is important that, uh, as a government, we continue to um, uh, pressurise uh, companies to, to make that progress, but also recognise the work that we need to do within communities. OK, remind members just to keep questions and answers as succinct as possible. Fulton McGregor, followed by Mary Fee. Fulton McGregor. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, to ask the Cabinet Secretary what more the Scottish Government will do to reduce and tackle disability hate crimes specifically. Cabinet Secretary. Um, I hope it goes without saying, President Officer, that we are uh, absolutely committed to tackling hate crime in all its forms, uh, including uh, disability hate crime. 
Uh, we do very much believe uh, that disability hate crime remains uh, underreported uh, and we will continue to work with disabled people's uh, organisation to uh, encourage uh, the reporting and we will uh, continue to uh, progress this work through uh, our planned uh, awareness raising campaign and also the establishment of the, the multi-agency uh, delivery group but it is important uh, that the work that other ministers are doing in this regard, the Minister for Social Security and the work that she's done in pulling together the, the disability delivery plan, that that also locks in uh, the work that we are doing to, to tackle uh, disability hate crime. Mary Fee followed by um, John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, firstly, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement um, today. And I agree with the Cabinet Secretary that tackling hate crime in all its forms must be a priority. And I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's announcement of funding through the Equality Budget to promote equality and cohesion across Scotland. However, I am slightly disappointed that the Cabinet Secretary has failed to make reference to the recent Scottish Police Authority figures, which highlight a concerning rise of 34.5% in hate crime targeting trans people between 2015-16 and 2016-17. And there has undoubtedly been progress in improving Briefly, the knowledge please, of police officers regarding the specific hate crimes suffered by members of the LGBTI community, with Police Scotland working with the Equality Network to provide 91 police officers with bespoke LGBT training. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what plan she has to work with the Equality Network and Police Scotland to widen access to LGBTI training for police officers to help eradicate this particularly insidious type of hate crime and promote a more socially inclusive and cohesive society. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I advise Mary Fee that there, um, I'm informed there's already been some work undertaken uh, with uh, Police Scotland in this regard in terms of specific training uh, for, for police officers around LGBTI uh, issues and actually police officers uh, have a role in providing training uh, particularly to the people who are working in third party reporting uh, centres uh, also so the issue of training uh, is, is a live one and one that will have to be continually uh, revisited. Uh, she is right to point to the increase in the hate crime against uh, the transgender community. Um, the crimes reported have went up from 30 in the previous year to 40. That is indeed an increase. But I think we'd all accept again that there is an under-reporting here and that we have to continue in our endeavours with the Equality Network and Police Scotland uh, to encourage uh, at all times the reporting even of low-level incidences. It's really important uh, that people um, report uh, all abuse in all its forms to show that it just won't uh, be tolerated in any shape or fashion. John Finney to be followed by Alex Cole-Hamilton. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of the support and assure of the Scottish Green Party's support for um, the initiatives outlined. Um, Anti-Semitism has been touched on and the rise of the far right clearly has played a, a, a part in that unacceptable heinous crime. As regards Cabinet Secretary, the redefinition of anti-Semitism, can you outline what the deficiencies were of the previous definition? Can you tell me whether you have plans to redefine Islamophobia? And how do you respond to concerns that this definition could be abused to stop legitimate criticism of the apartheid state of Israel? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah. I mean, can I reassure Mr Finney that uh, we engage uh, with all communities uh, without fear or favour, whether it's the Jewish community, uh, whether it's the, the Muslim community. And if the Muslim community are approaching this government in terms of wanting to reshape definitions that will have a practical uh, impact on how they are supported on the ground, there is absolutely uh, an open door uh, to, to doing that. Um, we looked at the issue of the definition of anti-Semitism uh, very carefully. Uh, we spoke to uh, a range of stakeholders uh, with that and were persuaded, uh, you know, coolly and calmly uh, of, of the merits of it. Alice Cole Hamilton, followed by John Meeson. The presiding officer, I too thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that tackling hate crime must start from an early age and that there is a need to ensure that LGBTI pupils at every school have, su have sufficient protection and enjoy a culture of openness and acceptance fostered by teaching staff, given time for inclusive education campaign inform us that nine out of ten LGBTI pupils have suffered homophobia, biphobia or transphobia? And does she recognise that an anxiety still exists in some particular 
particularly faith-based schools, as to what aspects of sexuality may be discussed in school as a hangover both from the days of Clause 2A and some aspects of religious doctrine. Cameron Secretary. Well, it is, of course, uh, the, the job and duty of government to provide as much uh, clarity and uh, certainty on these matters as, as possible. Uh, Mr Cole Hamilton may be interested to note that the LGBTI Inclusive Education Working Group uh, met for the first time on the 9th of May and is due to meet again on the 20th of June. Uh, that the the Deputy First Minister has also committed to meeting universities, the General Teaching Council for Scotland, local authorities before recess uh, to look at the content analysis of uh, equality issues in initial teacher education. Uh, the points he touches upon in terms of equality teaching for uh, guidance and you know, all teaching staff or the, the children's workforce as a whole is, is well made and the, the Deputy First Minister is well engaged on the issues of equality and CPD for, for teaching staff, as well as uh, personal, social and emotional education. Also, he's engaging very closely uh, with the committee's inquiry in that matter. John Mason, to be followed by James Kelly. Thank you. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary mentioned Jo Cox, who herself was a victim of hate crime, and she said, I think, that she was going to attend an event uh, this weekend. Can she tell us if the government has any other involvement in these uh, great get-together events? Uh, yes, President Officer, uh, several ministers uh, recently met uh, Brendan Cox uh, to hear about the work of the Joe Cox uh, Foundation. I know the President Officer and other parliamentarians and party leaders uh, you know, met with Mr Cox uh, and uh, members of the Foundation. As I said, I'll be attending Edinburgh Pride uh, the weekend. The First Minister is hosting an intergenerational women's event at Glasgow Women's Library on Saturday and the, the Minister for Social Security uh, is hosting an event on Friday uh, for disabled people in Glasgow and that's been arranged through the uh, Glasgow uh, Disability uh, Alliance and I really would uh, support and encourage uh, everybody to, to get out there and support uh, the, the great get together this weekend. James Kelly, possibly Rona Mackay for a time. Thank you. C can I ask the Cabinet Secretary for an assurance that the work of the Brackendale Review in relation to the offensive behaviour at Football Act will not be used to hinder parliamentary scrutiny of the private members bill, which I am pursuing to repeal the offensive behaviour at Football Act. Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's not for ministers to hinder parliamentary uh, scrutiny of any piece of legislation, including uh, the, the members bill. Um, the the, the, the Brackadale review uh, includes the Offensive Behaviour at Football and Threatening Communications Act because it's a, a key piece uh, of hate crime uh, legislation. Uh, Lord uh, Brackadale um, is very committed to uh, being very accessible in how he conducts the review um, and there will be opportunities uh, for members to remain appraised of that work and indeed uh, to engage uh, with that work going forward as well. And obviously from the government's perspective, uh, we will um, wait and uh, see what other members bring forward uh, in response, not just to Lord Brackadale's review, but Mr Kelly's uh, members' bill. And finally, very briefly, Rona Mackay. Thank you. I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's statement on LGBTI equality. Does the Cabinet Secretary think this is important, not just here in Scotland, but across the UK? Uh, yes, I, I do, President Officer. Uh, Scotland is uh, recognised as one of the most progressive countries uh, in terms of LGBTI equality, uh, according to the Rainbow Index 2016, which is published by ILGA uh, Europe. But of course, we, we can't be complacent. It is unacceptable that homophobia, as we've seen in the hate crime statistics, has increased by 5%. I think it increased 10% uh, the year before. Um, and, you know, uh, crimes uh, against uh, the LGBTI community um, are the, the sec have the second highest incidence um, of hate crime uh, despite having progressive policies uh, and legislation in place so we need to continue to work uh, very closely with our national LGBTI organisations and I think it is uh, important in my view uh, to advance and promote equality out with Scotland that's why as a government uh, we allow civil partners who want to get married in Scotland to do so. It's why my party want to ensure that same-sex couples have equal pension rights uh, and why we believe that the UK Government Foreign Office should appoint a special envoy uh, to promote the rights uh, and to help alleviate discrimination and persecution faced uh, by the LGBTI community throughout the world. Thank you very much. That concludes our statement. We'll now have a statement from... Rosanna Cunningham, Cabinet Secretary on the Greenhouse Gas Inventory. We'll just take a few moments to change seats. <laughs>